riffin' with Brazoo oh, oh, all day long. Oh, we're pulling up the news, oh, and I'll sing you a song, cause oh, I got it bad. And oh, it's so sad, but I'm here, I'm gonna try to make you glad. And welcome to the Riffin' with Rizzuo News, everybody. I'm your host, Paul Rizzuo, and how the hell's everybody doing? Oh, welcome back. I'm in full force today, full action, because, well, I think I might be getting a new job here at a fucking cheesecake factory. Oh, boy. It looks like we all most might though might be getting that oh cheese job at a little tiny cheesecake warehouse well it's not tiny it's actually kind of big but i can't wait to dig my fucking claws into whatever flavored cheesecake we have maybe i'll have to bring home i'll have, I'll have like a, a sweepstakes of cheesecakes if you guys write in send me an email and say you want a cheesecake maybe i'll flip it up shove it through your fucking mailbox on the way home but (laughs) we'll see how that goes I I have an interview tomorrow morning I have to get up extra early take my uh, liquid shits that I have I well if I get up at 6 o'clock I can probably get there by 7.30 oh oh 7.30 I'll get there a little earlier kids now remember kids want to go to a job interview you gotta go about ah, get there 10 minutes early that ah, makes you look good it shows you can show up before the time they're expecting you right right then and there you already got your foot through the fucking door so just make sure you don't shit in the chair when you're having the interview but oh, then you pretty much got the job but Sure, good old Paul's got some experience under his big old belt and his big slippers, so hopefully I won't have to take my cane out and whack the fucking hiring manager out, so I will report back on that, kids, so. All right, let's take a look at some news. I hate to get into it. I saw two actually pop up today, so I was like, all right, well, I'm doing a riffing tonight. A riffin' a night, a riffin' with Rizzuo News, because, oh, uh, what the hell else would you choose? Nothing, baby. Oh. All right, let's take a look at our first article of the evening. Ancient zombie viruses trapped in Arctic ice could unleash deadly new pandemic. Quote, tangible threat, unquote. Yeah, that's, that's what you need to scare us with. A oh, fuck, what the hell is this? Ancient zombie virus trapped in the Arctic ice. So the, the Ice Age did collect some rather raw species that had the... Uh, the tangible threat of a virus that'll turn you into a, a walrus or a polar bear who will shave off someone's hair and take their head and skull right out and yeah, right out with it I if I could turn into a polar bear this this would be okay that I wouldn't have to think about working or maybe I'll take my own claw out and dig through all the fucking cheesecakes and murder the whole staff over there, but... <laughs> let's take a look, let's see, before I make any assumptions, let's just take a look, let's see what we have here on this Arctic threat zombie virus, Jesus Christ. They don't make it up, do they? The melting Arctic permafrost could unleash ancient zombie viruses and trigger a catastrophic global health emergency, concerned scientists say. Yeah, scientists, they're working a little too hard. Maybe maybe they're just trying to, they're like, this could happen. Well, it will. So, you know, you got the scientists that 
and they're never gonna quit their day job. They're like, uh, I, did they find something? What the hell did they find? We now face a tangible threat and we need to be prepared to deal with it. It is as simple as that. Jean Michel Claver, Professor Emeritus of Medicine and Genomics at Aix Marseille University. Where the hell does that sense come from? Experts are already working with the University of the Arctic, an international educational and research cooperative, on establishing a monitoring network to help identify cases of diseases caused by ancient microorganisms early on before they can spiral out of control. Oh, isn't that what COVID did? Now they can say this. Oh, they, they'll control it. They'll inject a fucking primate out of the ice. Probably wrapped up in a polar bear's mouth. Look like a fucking Resident Evil 2 zombie. Like a liquor coming out of fucking water. About to take a walrus. Like a man. Pull, pulls him. Fucking drags his skull. And puts a hole in it. So he sinks faster. <laughs> wow. The network could also provide quarantine facilities and medical services for those infected to help minimize a potential outbreak, including preventing contagious patients from leaving the region. Oh boy, yeah, I'm sure they'll want to get the hell out of there. Oh boy, if they're not too sick with the old Arctic zombie virus. How the hell will they survive? Man, how will they survive? I mean, if their brains not completely through the fucking floor, they're gonna slide around. They just turn into ice. What happens? They just slide out of the hospital. They're like, we just go through the double doors into the fucking traffic, and some old bag hits the Arctic zombie and it shatters into a million fucking ice crystals. <laughs> God, the so-called Methuselah microbes, also known as zombie viruses, are capable of remaining viable for tens and thousands of years encased in the frozen soil, which covers nearly 20% of the Earth's northern hemisphere. Uh-oh. <laughs> the crucial part about permafrost is that it is cold, dark, and lacks oxygen. Well, you're not breathing very well there, so which is perfect for preserving biological material. Oh, God. Yeah, as soon as you dig a hole, they're all gonna climb the fuck out and rip your spine out of your asshole, like I always say. And then the virus will take a hold of you, it'll take human form, and it'll just go from border to border, from state to state, from country to country, oh, and ocean to ocean. Yeah. You could put a yogurt in permafrost and it might still be edible for 50,000 years later. Wow, really? I'll have to try that. <laughs> I don't think it would probably taste good, but maybe, maybe it will be edible 50,000 years later. That's a sentence that I want to save and tell one of my friends because uh, they won't ever believe me again. They'll say, get the fuck out of here, Paul. And I'll say, oh boy, I'm gonna prove it to you right and for all, or once and for all. <laughs> I'll take the yogurt, blueberry yogurt, shove it in a fucking crevasse, and dig it under the snow and the ice caps. And I'll say, hey, 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 buddy, why don't you go check the fucking yogurt and see if it's still edible. It's like toxic mutated shit in there and they eat it somehow become infected with an arctic zombie virus because the uh, zombie and one of his little pinkies accidentally nipped the fucking yogurt cup as he was trying to crawl out of the ground. <laughs> Scientists believe the deepest layer... I already said that. Or no, I didn't. Uh -oh. Scientists believe the deepest layers of permafrost could be preserving, oh, preserving viruses that inhabited the Earth, oh, up to a million years ago. 
this world's insane. How the hell does anything work? Long before humans' most ancient ancestors, who it's believed made first appearance on planet some 300,000 years ago. As soon as、uh, they take one of them fucking Arctic mummy zombies up, there's, there's no idea what the hell. As soon as the sun hits their eye, they just their head explodes. <laughs> They've been just living in soil and ice for their entire dead lives, but modern humans, would therefore, have no natural immunity against the prehistoric viral invaders. Oh God, naturally, no, no, we wouldn't. You think COVID's bad? Well, just wait till this hits fucking rock bottom. You think people were buying toilet paper off the shelves before? Oh God, it's gonna become everyone's gonna take their mallet out and just smash everybody out of the way. Get out of the fucking way! Complete chaos in every street, in every store, in every corner, in every road. People spraying gas on one another, fucking ch- chucking matches and lighting people on fire, just so they can get a fucking Reese's Puffs bar. Wolf it down before they get their fucking throat gnawed out by an Arctic polar bear, or、uh, <laughs> whatever the hell it is. <laughs> Our immune systems may have never been in contact with some of those microbes, and that is another worry. Claverice told the outlet, "The scenario of an unknown virus once infecting a Neanderthal coming back at us." Although unlikely, has become a real possibility. Let's let's delete that possibility. <laughs> oh my God! They they have a picture of a fucking microbe, a microorganism、uh, discovered in thawing permafrost. Looks like a fucking street sweeper. <laughs> Guys, gotta see this. Looks like a street sweeper with a in a puddle of piss. <laughs> and then the next picture is a fucking, basically Resident Evil. It's got two zombies up against a fucking fence, cage fence. I like how they cut a hole through the left side. <laughs> Zombie. This is gonna be the picture for the article for sure, with my bald ass、uh, head in the background. Like、uh, the zombies of monster movies, researchers are increasingly concerned that viruses that have lain dormant for tens of thousands of years could pose a threat. Oh yes, I bet. <laughs> I seriously already knew this was coming. This isn't a surprise to me, but the fact that it's in fucking Arctic zombies is a little surprising. But. I mean, you know, Resident Evil 2. They set you up there. They want you to play their games. They're like, all right, now in about 15 years, we're gonna dig up the fucking Arctic zombies, and you guys are gonna have to deal with it for real, real this time. So get your Magnum PI out and your fucking flame rounds or whatever the hell they have. The prospect of ancient viruses escaping their icy prisons as the most remote regions of Earth and kicking off a new global pandemic sounds unlikely, but virologists believe there's at least some room for concern. Well, of course, you gotta concern everybody that way. If it does happen, they can't throw you under the bus and run over your fucking skull and smush it, so you won't even be able to understand it anyway. But. We don't know what viruses are lying out there in the permafrost, but I think there is a real risk that there might be one capable of triggering a disease outbreak, say, of an ancient form of polio. Virologist Marion Koopmans of Iramas Medical Center in Rotterdam told the outlet, "Oh, what the fuck are these words? The hell's Rotterdam? We have to assume that something like this could." Happen. Yeah, yeah, and and that's why we have the zombie video games because we have to assume that there is a possibility that we will live in a scenario like this. So get ready to lose your life, either that or try to save it. Alright, well.、Uh, I guess best luck to all of us.
uh, in the upcoming future. We'll have to take a look and revisit this again. Hopefully, hopefully this doesn't happen. It's going to be an interesting world. We got so many clowns on the on the, on the globe that, as it is now. But can't even imagine a fucking Arctic zombie virus running amok through all of our bodies. So. Next, woman charged with son's murder after cops find his body in box behind false wall. What the fuck? Oh, now this picture. This woman looks so a little demented. And by a little, I really, oh, really mean a lot. She looks like she smokes so much pot, and her face is drooped down like Snoopy the fucking fuck dog or whatever the hell from uh, Seven Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. She looks like she's from that. Only she's the old robber that tries to fuck all the children and then beat him in the head and then shove him in a wall and then paint over it. Cops say the woman who has a previous murder conviction under her belt, well, why is she out then? Attempted to hide the crime by pretending to be him in letters to family members, in which he insisted was okay. What, uh, what the hell is okay? There's nothing okay about it. A 66-year-old Mississippi woman is accused of killing her son and hiding his body in her home. Oh, in her home. Hey, um, hey, John, uh, can you uh, go try to unclog the toilet? I, I left a big shitter in there, and if you can unclog it, you can have some dinner. If you don't, you're gonna go to bed. And then she comes in there with a fucking pipe and plunges over the fucking head with it. Over the head. And then he cracks his teeth on the toilet, bangs his head on a fucking bathtub, a little stoop there. And then I guess she cuts his fucking anus out and then puts high C up there. So he fucking just. <laughs> You know, you just can't handle it anymore, and you just pass out and die. Like this Johnny guy. Oh, this 66-year-old bag. And chucked him in a wall and painted it. Oh, what the fuck is a false wall? Boy, over the weekend, the Gulfport police station arrested Jerry Ruby. Who the hell is that? Who also goes by the last name Israel. We do have two problems now with Jerry and Israel. It's, it's getting real. And they charged her with the murder of her 42 year old son, John Allen Gaither, after discovering his body behind a false wall. It's not really a wall, it's just painted over with a fucking little shitty paintbrush. The investigation began back on December 22nd, all right before Christmas. I don't think Santa's putting anything in her fucking stocking. Oh, except a court letter. Oh, and the police department responded to a welfare concern. Oh, for Gaither. Oh, boy. That had been reported missing out by the state relatives. Per CNN citing Gulfport. Just imagine this police department fucking just hitting golf balls all goddamn day off the roof into the highway they're allowed to do it because they're a fucking police department whatever the hell they say it goes their spokesman Jason DeCrew family members last made contact with him on December 10th as police investigated they said they began noticing discrepancies in statements provided by Israel claiming she became increasingly uncooperative and changed her statements multiple times in the days that followed. Oh, of course, of course, she's gonna change him around. But once you're lying, you're just trying to lie out of the lie that you're in. And then eventually you get so fucking confused, you don't even know what the hell you're lying about in the first place other than throwing your dead son behind a fucking wall and then painting over with some shitty paint. 
It's obviously not good enough because the cops can spot it right away like a fucking toupee on a bald asshole. Uh, during the investigation, detectives discovered Israel had a past murder conviction, saying in a press release she killed someone in the 90s, made subsequently made several attempts to dump the deceased subject at different locations throughout Florida. Which you do have a rotisserie saw in her fucking minivan there. I'm gonna saw your leg off. I'll dump you over here at a fucking Burger King up. What's that? Uh, you don't need your leg. I'll dump you at, dump that in the fucking ocean where I have a shark wolf it up. What's that? You don't need your tongue. I'll cut it out and chuck it over the fucking bird's eye view. Window restaurant. That's, that's where she got breakfast that day. She's got her half her son's bottom half carcass in a trunk. She's like eating some dippy eggs. She's like, hmm, where, where else can I saw, saw my uh, victim up and dump him out in a fucking circuit city? Maybe stuff his nose in a fucking CD case, but... <laughs> With that information, detectives were able to obtain a search warrant. Well, this is, uh... Israel, that's her fucking name, I guess. They, they then conducted a search of the residence on January 18th, with police saying Israel ingested a handful of unspecified pills. What the hell were those, those pills? When they walked into the home, they saw these pills. She was taken to a local hospital for treatment while authorities searched the home. Uh oh, here we go. During the search of the residence, a wooden box containing a deceased subject, letter identifying as John Allen Gaither, was located behind the false wall, said the cops. According to Declare, whatever the fuck that is. Israel attempted to cover up her son's death by writing notes to family members in his name saying he was okay. Well, what the fuck did those letters read? <laughs> hey, um, I'm actually fine. My meemaw's taking care of me. I actually have stuff behind a fucking wall. I have no oxygen left and I haven't eaten in 90 days, so... After release from the hospital, she's being held at the Harrison County Adult Detention Center without bond. What the hell is that? Is that a jail or she's just there? What are you in for? Uh, false wall. False wall. That's, that's like code word for dead son in the fucking wall. So, Jesus Christ. What the fuck is wrong with everyone? Oh boy, why don't you get the fucking Arctic zombie to take her ass out? That may be a good thing to do if you if this whole mutated shit virus comes to life. Just just have it attack where the hell she's staying at. Have her put put her in her place. Fucking rip her face oh, off her body, then shove her in a wall. Then I will cut off her jaw. And then she won't be able to say nothing. Ah, all right. Best of luck to the uh, relatives that are dealing with this fucking crazy Israel broad. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe that the family that she's writing to, all those family members can... Well, he's dead, I forgot about it. I was going to say, maybe they can help him out, but I guess not, so... And I, they're definitely not going to help her out after they know this story. Uh, I don't know what to tell her. Maybe it, maybe saw her head open and rewire her brain so she, you know, figure out why, why, why she's so fucked in the head. Maybe she just needs part of her brain cut out, so she'll just turn into a fucking tart. Oh, boy. That should be her punishment, really. She'll just be walking around. Duh. Duh. I put my thumb in a wall. Duh. Oh, in a wall. And hopefully, hopefully the polar bear will stick his paw out, claw your fucking face off. That'll be the end of you. 
will kick you down into the fucking Arctic sunken ship, and then you'll freeze, and then another 300,000 years later, whatever the hell a human being is, will probably take on your, your, uh, mindly functions, whatever the hell that is, murdering your son and chucking him in a fucking half a shit wall, a false wall. All right, let's take a look at one more and I'm getting the hell out of here, kids. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to the goddamn channel. Follow me on Insta Gay, the Paul Resume Comedy. Chinese marathon runner disqualified for chain smoking through in the entire race. Wow, it, that is dedication. Well, it's isn't it December or it's January or whatever? What the hell is this? <laughs> this fucking picture is hilarious. A man named Uncle Chen. Ping tong, dong, dong. He has a fucking cigarette in his mouth. He can't take it out. All the other uh, runners, they have no idea what the hell they're up against. Like, ping tong, fucking. All they gotta do is, is have a fire, a little mini fire extinguisher in the pocket. Take it out and try to blow his fucking cigarette out while he's running down the race. So they, they can blow it off his face. Yeah. Blow it right off oh, his face. And the Chinaman will have to lose the race. Sure he will. And being in good enough shape to complete a full 26.2 mile marathon at 52 year old is impressive. Well, sure it is. It's also impressive to have old Slimmy in your fucking mouth unless you're Francine. Eh, <laughs> what, what, what are you saying, Pa? Oh, nothing. I was just saying that, you know, this guy's smoking Slimmies in a race trying to win the race. Oh, my God, that's so cool. Oh, yes, so it is so cool. Looks like a fool, oh, oh, he looks like a fool. He's being good enough to impress the entire staff of the whole race team. And to do it in three hours and 33 minutes is even more impressive than to do so while chain smoking the entire race is downright insane. <laughs> All right, Toronto son, let's just put a fucking lid on it. That's what a man named Uncle Chen did during the Alexia Men Marathon in China earlier this year. I'm sure they'll fucking bash me for that. And apparently all his efforts is for naught. He has been disqualified. Reportedly smoking on the track. What if you were fucking smoking medicinal weed? You're like, I need it to run, baby. I need it to run, 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 Rudolph. Baby's gonna get me far. Or whatever the hell the lyrics are, but. The Alex Alaman Marathon Committee issued a statement announcing the disqualification for violating an article in the Examine Marathon Rules and Regulations. I'm reading this shit all wrong, and I don't give a shit. But, oh. Article 2.12, which states uncivilized behavior from runners such as open defecation, smoking. Uh, they're comparing smoking a cigarette to taking a shit on a fucking racetrack. That doesn't really go hand in hand. But, or trampling on flower beds. I guess the, they hire a whole staff to clean up the flower beds. Oh. You wouldn't want to see an old, old back giving head because then you'd throw up all over the flower beds. Yeah. Then you'd have to get Article 212 to clean it. No oh boy, oh, they would clean it. Or would they? Or would they? Oh. Uncle Chen. 
crawled the finish line just five minutes slower than his 328 finish. All right, show off from two years ago in place 574th place out of 1500. What a shit show of a fucking amount of people. He has been at this for a while too. Uncle Chen was first photographed during the 2018 Gong Hong Marathon when he completed it in three hours and 36 minutes. Uh-oh. He competed at the same marathon oh, oh, a year later, finishing four minutes better at 3:32. Oh, look at you! Yeah, now look at you. You're a you're hunk. You're a hunk of a runner. You probably got your ego through the fucking floor. You don't even know how to live your life without. Your brain rot, your fucking karma to the next level. He previously had been allowed to compete while keeping his bad habit, but the Chinese Athletics Association implemented a new rule last year in an effort to promote healthy participation and curb smoking during events. Well, if someone's nervous, they're gonna they're gonna stick a fucking stick in their mouth and light it up like they're lighting a bank on fire, which is what I would like to do. That's what a lot of people would like to do now because the banks don't help anybody. All they do is steal from you, oh, and then you're in debt. You'll never get out of debt. Oh. You'll never get out of fucking debt, and you'll never win the race because you're smoking yourself into a fucking graveyard. So it looks like Uncle Chen's own viral popularity was ultimately his downfall. Reactions to Chen's unorthodox methods have drawn both praise and criticism online from fellow competitors. Oh, there's no doubt inconsiderate to others in the race. Many applaud him for being able to compete the grueling race while actively harming himself. <sighs> well, sure, he doesn't mean to harm himself. He just, uh, he just can't stand the fucking world. No, so he's got to puff a slimy down, right, Francine? No. Oh. Hey, Francine. Francine? Yes. 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 Oh, I was just, uh, we're talking about Slimmies on here. I figured you'd have a Slimmy to smoke down. Oh, yes. I was actually just about to puff one down. Well, sure you were. Sure. Do you think, uh, people that are running running a relay race or a track meet, should they be smoking Slimmies? Yes, yes, but I think they should give them to me after they're done. Oh, puffing them down because I want to smoke them all, all down so I can get to turn into a clown because when I smoke those, I feel a little silly, Paul. Well, sure you do, because you're a fucking lunatic, Francine, and that seems to be about all the time I have for tonight. Wow. Doesn't seem like anything else. That, that is the end of the article, so that's all the time we have. Francine, are you going to get a new hairdo, a new fucking cartonous uh, slimmies? Are you going to cross the border tonight? Yes, I'm going to be in a race. With a couple, like ten Chinese men, four <laughs> Japanese, dirty what? knees, Japanese. Look at these dirty knees. Uh-huh. You sound like uh, Rob okay, Zombie's well, wife. Now we'll, we'll talk to you. Well, well uh, I know. A, a little, little later. later. Oh boy. Chairs as he downstairs. I don't know, I actually just tried looking for a plane. Trying to play me. I'm 
just asking what the hell is the problem.